How to invest $1,000 into the stock market. That's what I'm gonna share with you guys here today. If you're new here, I am Jeremy, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about investing in the stock market. Let's say you have $1,000 on the sideline. How should you go about investing that? That's what we're gonna get into today. I hope you guys really enjoy today's video. I hope you get a lot of value out of it. Um, let me get across one point before we start getting into like, like how to actually invest this money, how to deploy out this $1,000, okay? First and foremost, make sure you always have some savings on the sidelines, some what I call emergency money, at least a few thousand dollars of emergency money that's on the sideline at all times before you really start investing because what can end up happening Happening is let's say you have an emergency situation that's something that really needs money okay you get a flat tire for your car or something health related happens or something in general that comes out of the ordinary and it costs you money okay if you don't have any emergency money and you already started investing in stocks then essentially what you're gonna have to do is you'll have to sell your stocks you that thousand dollars you have in your stocks to go ahead and use that money toward your emergency expense you don't ever want to be in that situation because stock prices can be volatile what if you're in a, a time you invested happen happens to be a, a time when the stock market's struggling or one of your stocks is struggling, then you have to go and sell it at a loss. Is that something you really want to do? No. So before you really start investing, make sure you have some emergency money on the sideline that's like untouchable money just in case the worst happens, okay? And then the other point I want to just kind of drive across is some people think $1,000 isn't enough money to start investing. I can tell you, you have to start somewhere, whether it's a few hundred dollars. Like I started, my first investments were like $250. Then I built up to like $500. Then I started investing $1,000 at a time. And now it's, you know, several thousand dollars, if not tens of thousands of dollars at a particular time. I didn't get there because I was like, oh, let me just wait a million years until I have $10,000 saved. No, I started with hundreds of dollars we built up to thousands then tens of thousands hundreds of thousands and kept building from there okay and you want to do something very similar where you start with smaller amounts of money because it's the best that's the best okay when you can start with smaller amounts of money and start building and all of a sudden you go from you know maybe three figures to then four figures then you have five figures in the market okay things start to get real fun and you just kind of get that process you get that experience in the market okay so there's no such thing as oh it's not enough money you only have a thousand dollars no Okay, if you have a thousand dollars, there's plenty to invest in the market. Even if you have a hundred bucks, even if you have two hundred bucks, as long as you have some money on the sideline and you feel comfortable investing, you feel comfortable deploying that money out and trying to make that money into more money. As long as that's the, the situation for you, then you're ready to rock and roll regardless of money. Okay, and one of the big reasons for this, okay, the biggest reason I could actually give like the credit to is honestly an app, an app that's been created called Robinhood. Now there might be some other apps out there that do similar but I'm not sure okay so Robinhood basically in order to place a trade with them it is free okay it is absolutely free so there's no trade commission to go ahead and buy and sell shares with that particular app called Robinhood whereas in the past okay when I first started investing every time I bought or sold a stock it cost me $20, okay? If I wanna be exact, it was $19.95 every time I bought or sold a stock, whether, whether I had one share in that stock or 20 shares or 100 shares or 1,000 shares, okay? And so needless to say, when you were investing small amounts of money when I started, it was actually a very, very negative thing. I wish Robinhood was around back when I first started investing because uh, I would have been in a situation where I could invest it way more money, where I could have basically started getting gains right off the bat, whereas in the, the early days when I was only investing a few hundred bucks at a time, I was having to get like a 5% gain or 6% gain or something like that just to break even on the stock because the trade commission was taking so much money out, okay? So needless to say, you guys have a really good situation because you have a uh, an app called Robinhood that's free. Robinhood is not very international as of right now. However, there may be some apps out there in the international markets that maybe do something similar of uh, basically free trades. And that is a definitely an awesome thing for you guys out there, okay? So you have this thing called Robinhood. So that allows you to basically invest smaller amounts of money because you don't have to pay those trade commissions. By the way, most other brokerages, online brokerages nowadays, they don't really charge 20 bucks anymore. Most of them charge around five dollars now okay so if you go with one of the other brokerages like a fidelity investments td ameritrade a scott trade e-trade someone like that 
you'll probably pay around $5 per trade. So you don't have to go with Robinhood, but in my opinion, if you have small amounts of money, hundreds of dollars or maybe a few thousand, it generally makes sense to go ahead and use Robinhood, okay? So awesome, you set up your Robinhood account, you enter in all of your information you got to set up, and hopefully you've already researched what to look for in stocks and things like that. Okay, I have a full course link down there in the description that goes into everything I look for when picking stocks. I've been in the market for over a decade. I'm pretty successful at doing the sorts of things. So if you wanna learn that way, you can definitely learn that way. That's linked down there in the description. But hopefully you have like this knowledge bank of, of what to look for in a stock. So you're ready to actually start investing and actually deploy this thousand dollars out. So what I would suggest you kind of first start with is looking at a stock, you know, thinking about a big company, okay? A really like big tech company, okay? Maybe it could be something like an Apple. Maybe it could be something like a Facebook. Um, I would include Amazon and I would include Google into this list, but uh, Amazon's like $1,800 a share. So if you have only $1,000, like you couldn't even buy a whole Amazon share. Google, I would include them, but they're uh, like $1,000 a share or somewhere around there roughly. So that would be all your money essentially. So, but needless to say, something that's a really big tech company could be a Microsoft, a Facebook, an Apple, someone like that that's very well known. So you get some experience investing in some of those really big Goliath companies that are super, super profitable, that their business models are super, super relevant and things like that, okay? So you pick something like that, okay? And Mr. Softy will put up here Microsoft as well, okay? Something like that, one of those big, huge companies that have hundreds of billions. Alibaba, Alibaba is a possibility, okay? We'll add Alibaba um, to this kind of bank here. Alibaba is a, a Chinese conglomerate in China. It's kind of almost like, you know, a little bit different business model than what Amazon has, but in terms of like the importance to, you know, Amazon to the United States, Alibaba is that for China, okay? So one of those big, massive companies, you deploy some money into one of those. So great, now you have a really, really big company, okay? Now the next stock I would try to go ahead and find is something that is a nice dividend payer, okay? Uh, let's just say, yeah, dividend payer, which a dividend payer essentially is a stock that pays you out dividend money generally every three months. So just for holding that stock, you actually get money deposited into your account, dividend money, that you can go ahead and buy more shares of that stock, you can go buy another stock, you can take that money out of your account and go spend it or save that money or do whatever you want with that money. But basically it's dividend money that comes to you, okay? And you can just go to like Yahoo Finance or something and start searching in different stocks, different ticker symbols, and you'll see different stocks have, you know, dividend money they pay out. They'll say their yield there, that you can actually go to the history and see the history for how much money a lot of these stocks have been paying, okay? So that's awesome. So now you have one stock that's a big, huge tech company, okay? You have one stock that's a nice dividend payer, all right? So we're getting some experience. Now you're noticing that the main kind of principle I'm thinking about when you're starting out in the stock market and you're investing, investing a smaller amount of money is you wanna get experience in different types of stocks, okay? So, so far we have big tech, something related there. We have a big dividend payer. Now we're gonna think about something that is a growth play, okay? Something that I like to call a growth play. Now a growth play in the stock market is when you're investing in a stock that has a lot of growth. And when I talk about growth, I don't mean it's stock price gone up. A lot of people get confused when they get, you know, first start in the stock market in the first few months or first year. They think uh, being a growth stock means a stock that has a stock chart that's going up or something like that. That's not at all what we're talking about. When we're talking about a growth play, a growth stock, what you want to look at is the revenue growth. Now you can see this information on any company's investor relations page. So let's say you wanted to look into like Zillow, okay? You're like, man, Zillow, that must be a growing company. You go to Zillow investor relations page and go ahead and look at their latest 10K, which is otherwise known as their annual report, their latest 10Q, and it will go ahead and show you how much that company's grown, the revenues. And that's really what we're looking at. We're looking at revenue growth. How much is a company growing when it comes to revenues, okay? So that's that's what we're looking for there, a growth play. So now we have ex some experience. We've invested into a big tech company. We've invested into a dividend payer that's gonna consistently pay out dividends. We've invested into a growth play, a company that's growing revenues very, very quickly and has a chance to maybe grow revenues a massive amount into the future, okay? I'll give you a few more examples of, of growth plays, okay? Growth play could be something like a Tesla. Tesla for this latest quarter is gonna grow revenue somewhere around 60%, okay? Uh, Zillow, I just mentioned Zillow. That's a a huge growth company, okay? Even a company like Facebook is a growth company. Even though they're already a massive company, it's a company growing revenues at, you know, 20% plus. Alibaba is a company that still has unbelievably strong revenue growth in the mid 
in double digits growth for Alibaba there, okay? So there are a lot of companies, you don't have to just look at like very, very small companies. There are actually a lot of companies that are huge companies that have market caps in the tens of billions or hundreds of billions, but are actually still growing very, very quickly. And you can go ahead and use one of those stocks as kind of a growth play there, okay? And then there's one last stock I would buy here, okay? And what this stock would be is a stock that you really believe in a lot for the long term. The company that you would say, okay, if I had to put all this thousand dollars into this one stock, this is the one stock I would feel the most comfortable with. This is the business model I know the best. This is a company I like the most, okay? So let's just call this your number one, all right? Let's call this your number one. And for this one, it could be a small company, okay? It could be something that has hundreds of millions of dollars of market cap, which is super, super small. It could be something that has around a billion dollar market cap. It could be a huge company that has hundreds of billions of dollars of market cap. Whatever is your number one, that you believe the most in. It could be an NVIDIA, it could be an AMD stock, it could be an Apple stock, Alibaba, it doesn't matter. Whatever that one stock is that you understand the most about and you're like, man, if I had to put all my money in this one stock, this is a particular stock I would go ahead and do that with, okay? If you have that one stock out there, that's the four stock you wanna buy because you wanna get experience and you wanna get some confidence built up in yourself, especially when you're investing smaller amounts of money and you gotta have some conviction for a particular stock. Now, once again, if you're a little confused on like how to do research on these stocks, make sure you're using something like a Yahoo Finance, make sure you're going to the company's investor relations page, okay? So let's say you wanna look at Nvidia, okay? You're interested, you like know a lot about NVIDIA, you've been a gamer in the past and all these sorts of things, okay? You're like, I know NVIDIA pretty well. I know their products, I know the things they're successful at, I know the things they're not successful at, okay? But you wanna take your research to the next level. You wanna understand the financials. Once again, literally go to Google, open up your Google page, go to NVIDIA Investor Relations. It should be the first thing that pops up there. Click on that, start reading through the reports. I'm talking about the 10K, I'm talking about the 10Q, okay? Their annual report and their quarterly report. Those are phenomenal. You're gonna get a ton of information on there. You can even go to a tab called events and presentations and go ahead and listen to the latest conference call or investor meetings that have happened in the past, okay? And you will, over the course of, of probably six hours, get a ridiculous amount of knowledge built up in your mind on what that company does and why you have strong conviction that that's a great stock, okay? So if I look at this, this is kind of the perfect scenario for investing your first thousand dollars in the market. You buy one stock that's a massive tech company that you know really well, you know they're super profitable, and you know you know there's a good chance you're gonna make money on that stock. You own one stock that's gonna be paying you out dividends probably every three months, that's awesome. You get to get experience owning a dividend stock, collecting that dividend money, every Every three months going ahead and deploying that into new stocks. You own a third stock, which is a growth play, a stock that you think has you know huge potential to grow into the future, and a type of stock that just has massive, massive potential there. And then you own a fourth stock, which is your number one, the stock you believe in the most of any stock in the stock market. It could be a big tech company, it could be a small tech company, it could be a dividend company, it could be a growth play, it could be a value play, it could be anything across the board. But that fourth one is just a company you believe in the most, and you're just trying to get confidence in yourself that you're judgment and your reasoning is correct. Okay, guys? So that is how you invest $1,000 into the stock market. I hope you guys really enjoyed this as always. If you have a question on anything we discussed in today's video or something I didn't address, make sure you ask it in the comments section. I will try to get back to as many of you guys as possible. And also make sure you guys hit a thumbs up if you got some good value out of this here today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.